we've seen a new Britain evolve over time. I mean, if you think back to 1952, um, the Queen's first visit to Nigeria was in 1956, and that was before Nigeria's independence. Yes. Um, we're now well over 60 years since Nigeria uh, got its independence from the UK. Um, and in all that time, the country, the UK, has evolved. And our relationships with other countries have also evolved. Um, and I think the Queen has been a constant in all of that and has provided a sort of anchor to it. Um, but I don't think that that evolution of, uh, uh, of the relationships between the UK and other countries, especially in the Commonwealth, uh, is going to stop. You know, countries evolve, those relationships evolve. Um, the links between the people um, of the UK and Nigeria, as an example, are, will remain very strong and will evolve with time. So, yes, in a sense it's a new Britain, but it's also a changing Britain, um, and we'll see how it evolves. I don't think there's any serious threat to the monarchy, to the crown, um, and I've been very impressed, actually, in the last week or so with the new king. Um, the way he's sensed the mood of the public, um, the way that he's interacted with the public, I think showing the, the human side uh, of a son who's lost uh, his mother, um, and also understanding the importance of the unity of the United Kingdom, hence, as you say, him travelling to uh, all the four nations of the United Kingdom. Um, so it's a good, strong start. Um, he has the family behind him, uh, as we all know. I do believe he's got the country behind him. Uh, I won't deny, of course, there are people who are not in favour of the monarchy in the UK, but this is a, a free country and people can express those opinions. But the vast majority of this country uh, are proud of the monarchy, proud of what they have achieved, um, understand the importance to the unity of the country uh, of having a, a, a new king, somebody who is going to lead us forward. Yeah. Well, on his part, the UK Deputy High Commissioner believes that King Charles III will take forward the sense of public duty as he has learned from his mother. I think so, and I think what we're seeing uh, in the UK is, is not merely an outpouring of grief, but also an affirmation of support for the monarchy and for the crown. And King Charles III has also uh, been talking to people express continuity really. Uh, he's had a long time to learn from the experience and the example of his mother and that duty, that public service is something that people respect and that he himself has said he will emulate. So I think although, uh, and I was listening to uh, former High Commissioner Paul Arkwright, much has changed in the 70 years of, of the monarchy uh, and the period in the UK, I think that sense of public duty, that sense of uh, the conviction around the importance of public duty is something that King Charles will take forward. King Charles III has visited Nigeria for times, as you said, most recently in, in 2018, and in 2018 he was also uh, affirmed as head of the Commonwealth, 56 countries, 2.6 billion people, and I think uh, as the Commonwealth has changed, King Charles's interest in it and his conviction and his support for it has grown, uh, if anything, or at least the evidence of that has grown. So, you know, things do change, people do change, but I think that the position of the monarchy, not just in the UK, but in the Commonwealth, and indeed in the world, I think, will, will not alter uh, in terms of its importance. Um, I think King Charles is his own king. Uh, he's certainly not uh, Queen Elizabeth II in terms of profile and outlook. And I'm sure he'll bring his own personality to, to the role. But again, that sense of public duty, that sense of continuity, uh, which I think this week has in many ways been about, it's been about grief, about celebration, but also continuity. The Crown is uh, the head of the state of uh, the United Kingdom and is there to provide that stability, that continuity.